this is a special sports edition of the WDSU Hot Seat on Sunday night. Tonight we are talking all about our city's NBA team, the Pelicans. Joining me this evening, Jake Madison from Bourbon Street Shots and David Grubb from the website sportsnola.com. Who'd have thought that the Pelicans would save the weekend? The Saints lost on Thursday. LSU loses to Florida in a heartbreaker on Saturday. Tulane is in a really rough stretch football-wise, but the Pelicans win back-to-back -back games against two pretty good teams. Portland and Charlotte. David, have they seemingly got their season back on track after starting out so poorly? Well, they're absolutely signs of life. I mean, besides this two game winning streak, which for them is uh, exciting, it's four out of their last six. So absolutely, they've been playing much better as of late. They look like a basketball team. And in the early part of the season, that just wasn't what you saw out of them. Is it Drew Holiday, Jake? Look, Drew Holiday returned. It's, it's tremendous that his wife, Lauren, is doing well right now. Delivered a healthy baby girl, has had successful brain surgery. Surgery. He returns to the team and they've gone 2-0 and and he's had some pretty good stat lines in limited minutes. It, it goes to show you what you can do when you have a player around Anthony Davis that's a credible threat on offense. Right now they're playing with D-League guys with kind of role players forced to do more than they can and then you get Drew Holiday back who's a former All-Star and he can come in and he lights it up and it shows if you put some talent around Davis this team can win a lot of games. Can this team, look, this year to me was always going to be about rebuilding and kind of resetting what they did over the previous four years. Can they maybe scratch and claw their way back into at least contention for the eighth seed? Even if they don't make the playoffs this year, can they get back to a level of respectability with Anthony Davis and Drew Holiday? Well, I think you have some strong locker room presence uh, with Anthony Davis and Drew, so I don't think competition will be something that this team uh, lets go of. They're, they do fight. They do play hard every night. And I think at the bottom of the Western Conference, you don't see much difference between those teams. So I think they can make some uh, room uh, make some of this uh, gap up and get closer to the eighth spot. I don't think they're a playoff team. I think they're probably a 35 win max team, but I think they can gain some ground. When you look at the future of this team, we just talked about Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday is going to be a free agent. Is this really a year where you decide, do you push the chips to the table this summer and say it's Anthony Davis and Drew Holiday and these are our foundation pillars? The rest of the season, I don't want to call it an audition, but really you have to make a big decision this summer on Drew Holiday. Is that fair to say? Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's going to be a free agent. He, you still need a point guard to play with Anthony Davis. He's a big man. He needs someone to be with him in the pick and roll. Tim Frazier hasn't been able to do that. You've seen the improvement with Holiday. You know, like you were saying, this is a bit of a transition year. They wanted to see some improvement that was tangible, that they were getting better to make their big push this next offseason and next season. And that's, I think, what they're trying to do. I think the tough thing with Drew, though, is he's a 30 minute max guy. Mm -hmm. You can't play him 40 minutes um, with his health issues. So if you're going to bring him back, what's the price tag going to be and how long is it going to be? Because you still need some flexibility because you have so many needs with this team. We still haven't solved the small forward problem. We still don't really have a center. Uh, so there are definitely guys that we've got to be able to pursue. But Drew uh, is something you want to keep at the right price. That being said, that kind of segues into our next topic of general manager Dell Demps and, and head coach Alvin Gentry. Maybe on some, some very hot seats early this season because of the way they started 0-6, you know, 1-9 in their first 10 games. That's a rough start, and, and not many coaches survive something like that, especially back-to-back -back years after opening last year 0-6 and 1-11 and in, in, in their first 12. I think those hot seats have cooled because everybody kept saying, wait till Drew gets back, wait till Tyreek gets back, and he may be back soon as well. Do Dell Demps and Alvin Gentry have to continue to prove that progress is being made, or are they safe? Have, have, have Tom Benson and Mickey Loomis already decided, these are our guys, we're going forward with them, and nothing will happen to them this year, in your opinion? I don't think anything will happen during the season. I uh, just don't see who would be out there that you could bring in that would be better than what you have. Mm -hmm. I think you want to be able to get a full evaluation of what do you have inside the organization and what's the mission going to be. And I think that's the question that a lot of people have is, what's the commitment from ownership? What's the long-term plan for this team? You can get to a playoff level, and they can do that. But can you be the type of team that gets to a top four seed in the Western Conference to really compete for a championship? I don't know if this combination, and I really don't think that 
Goodell has proven over his nearly a decade of running this team that he can produce and bring in the kind of talent they're going to need to be a contender. Yeah, they're not going to get fired during the season. Like you said, there's no one else you're going to bring in that's going to make it's this counter, team better. Not to you, but I feel yeah. the same way. It's counterproductive unless you have somebody to bring in. It doesn't do any good to make a change during the season no. unless you have some all-star waiting to come right. in and replace them. You elevate um, uh, Ehrman right or Pac mm -hmm. to be the head right. coach, and they're not going to do anything yeah. differently than what's going on now. It's not going to fix the defense. You know, I think at the end of this season, it's really going to have to be Gentry and Demps really making a case to keep their jobs. You know, like I said, they're not getting fired during the season, but if this continues to go the way it's going, and they're showing signs of improvement on defense, the offense is starting to pick up since Holiday came back, but there's still huge cracks in this foundation. They're not playing great at times. They got bailed out at times during these past two wins uh, with the opponent not making shots while this defense was a wreck. Uh, you know, there's a lot of work to be done here, and they're going to have to make a case to say why they're the people to fix it. One of the guys that they drafted and everybody's excited about and still excited about, but is, is playing, you know, less minutes right now is Buddy Heald. Do you think that eventually at some point they will have to say it's more about the future than the present and give him more minutes? Not to say that he shouldn't earn his minutes, but I do think they drafted him to be part of the solution. So if at some point they know they're, they're not scratching and clawing for an eight seed, so to say, would it be better than playing a role player like Langston Galloway or Etwan Moore and really giving Heald a chance. Buddy Heald reminds me of, of J.J. Redick so much, and, and I don't know who he reminds you all of, but I remember that was a struggle for J.J. Redick when he first got to Orlando with Stan Van Gundy. It was win now, and he's not ready to help us win, and, and there were some bumps in the road there. Do you see a situation like that unfolding, or do you think at some point they'll say maybe he's earned it, or maybe it would be better for the future to play Buddy Heald more? I mean, I think as a guy who came out after four years in college, not a 19, 20-year-old NBA rookie, Guy who played four years, earned his uh, spot as the sixth pick in the draft. You expect production from him in his rookie year. Double figures in scoring is, I think, is the, the lower level of what you'd want out of him. And with them decreasing his minutes, I don't think you're going to get that development this year. And if you're not going to make the playoffs, it doesn't make sense to keep him glued to the bench. It seems to me you want to throw him to the Wolves, see if he's a guy who has it, and if he can be that cornerstone that you were talking about. Just to, to follow up on that, because I think that's a great point. You know, a, a couple of years ago, Damian Lillard came out and he was a four-year college player wins rookie of the year I hate to even use a term like this but is it too soon to say Buddy Heald may never emerge as that productive guy? I would never use a term like bust this early, but I think people, when he was drafted, expected more right away from him. Is that is it unfair to expect more right away? Or do you start leaning towards, well, maybe he won't be the same type of pro that he was in college? No, I think it's unfair to say that right now. You know, we're, we're only a handful of games into his career. Most rookies on NBA teams are net negatives for him. They don't actually help them win. Even Damian Lillard, who won Rookie of the Year, that team wasn't winning games. He was putting up good numbers, but he wasn't helping his team overall. Buddy Heald's a bit of a different story here. They're not asking him to be the main guy for this team, but you can start to see serious problems with his NBA game. His three-point shot does not look good. He's missing wide open looks. That was the one skill he had and was going to be able to bring into the NBA right away, and he's not making that. That said, the Pelicans were supporting his growth early in the year uh, before Holiday came back and his minutes decreased. I think you'll see you know, his level rise a little bit as they go on. Uh, once Tyreek Evans comes back, I think it pushes Tim Frazier out of the rotation. You can get a shooter like Buddy Heald back in, but until that happens, he's going to be on the outside looking in. I look at him too, and, and I know people like comparisons. I remember when David West came into the league as a four-year college player. He, he backed up P.J. Brown his first two years. In his first year, he did take a long time, even as a four-year college player, to find his footing and what his role uh, was, and he's gone on to become a two-time All-Star and, and a really good player, if you ask me. So I still hope that Buddy Heald finds his shot and, uh, and becomes a productive player. Big picture, you know, you said 35 wins. Is that what you would say for this team? What would you consider a successful Pelican season as we stand right now? They've won four of six, right. and they've gotten back on track a little bit. Is success for you hanging in maybe around that eight seed until the end of the season? What would what would you define success this season for the Pelicans as? I think it depends on how do you get to those 35 wins. If it comes at the expense of your youth, and if it comes at the expense of finding out what you have in terms of assets, but you're just playing 
playing to win meaningless games, then I don't think that's a successful season. But if it comes and you're seeing development, if you're seeing them beat teams that they shouldn't beat um, at certain points of the year, they start winning on the road, the defensive effort really starts to improve, then that's a successful season. Uh, but I don't think just winning for the sake of winning is something that they can hang their hats on. Before you follow up, I should say this right now, I wish Jim Moore were watching because he has, he has, he has knocked out of my vocabulary words like meaningless games because I have said that several times to him on our football productions and, and he, he does not like it very much at all. So, but I know what you're saying, so go ahead. So I actually disagree. I'm not looking at this one loss record and I want to see them going out and competing. I, I don't really care if they win, but I want to see this defense improve. I want to see this offense get on track. I'm not so much worried about the youth. The one young guy they have is Buddy Heald. You know, he, he's on a four-year contract. You have plenty of time to develop them. Uh, you know, with him, it's going to be more important what he's doing in practice than opposed to games necessarily. Right now, you have a window with Anthony Davis on, a, on his extension, and that window, the clock is going to start ticking before it closes. The clock has started ticking. It's, yeah, you can say that. It's started ticking. They need to show improvement right now. That means going out and competing and playing your best lineup to find out are these the role players we need to have around us going forward? Is Drew Holiday, like we had talked about earlier, you know, the second you know banana here on the team that you want playing with him, and it's figuring those decisions out right now. Do you think that this could potentially become worst case scenario? Kevin Love in Minnesota. Kevin Love was a great player in Minnesota and they could never put the pieces around him and then he exited. Or do you have hope in Loomis, Demps, Gentry, would you say you're, a, or I guess if you're a glasses half full or glasses half empty person, where do you where do you find yourself leaning right now? I mean, I think it's hard to look at Dempsey's track record of acquiring talent either through the draft or free agency and think that he's going to build a real tr true foundation around Anthony Davis. So it, I think there is a real fear by fans and probably with Anthony himself that the, the prime of his career is going to be spent with guys who are just not on his level. Now there's not going to be many guys you're going to find who are top five NBA talents, but we know this is a league where you need at least two all-stars just to be competitive and three if you want to be a championship team and we're not close to that yet. You know, I mean, and it's tough to get those guys. If you look at small markets, they te technically have a disadvantage usually in the NBA when it comes to free agents. Can you imagine a big-time free agent coming here this next offseason? I can't. You're looking at a situation with Kevin Love in Minnesota, or even before that in Minnesota, Kevin Garnett. Davis, ha you know, cares about his legacy tremendously. He wants to go down as one of the best players of all time. If you're on a losing team, that's not going to work. You know, you're looking at both those players jump ship, eventually won a title. Now their legacies are kind of cemented. This has got to be going through. Anthony Davis's mind. All right, we could talk about this forever, but I'm being told we have to wrap it up here. So David Grubb from SportsNola.com and Jake Madison from the website Bourbon Street Shots. The Pelicans' next home game is Wednesday night in the Smoothie King Center. Their next home game is Wednesday night in the Smoothie King Center against Minnesota. Their season is just getting started, and I'm sure we'll have these two back on to talk more about their season and the long-term possibilities for Anthony Davis as the season continues. Gina, back to you.